found the bangle. Should we be concerned it's on a severed arm? Faria would be a good guy that actually turns out to be a bad guy at TV sins. Also, should we be concerned that we're just freely touching the blue severed arm without thinking of the cooties that are undoubtedly mating on the skin? Yes. Yes, we should. So where's the other one? I told you. The British have probably looted this place twice over by now. But since the audience wasn't here for that, I'm going to tell you again. Also, the British. Then one will have to do. What is she basing that on? Is she happy for whatever she's doing to only work 50% of the time or only at 50% of the power? I'm not pretending to know how this thing works, but I really wouldn't want to risk only half of me being teleported across dimensions. They're going to destroy the cave. They're setting it on fire. How, how does one set stone aflame? Did you see that? Nope, because once again, when the bangle is activated, no one is looking. You go that way, I'll go check on the others. Characters split up for reasons, even though they likely don't have to, cliche. We're not here by choice, we were exiled. And that is not at all a massive warning sign in any way, for some reason. Don't mind him. We've been around for a hundred years, and he picks the stupidest parts of humanity to be obsessed with. Shut your mouth. Pop rocks are explosive particles of oral and aural joy, and I will not hear otherwise. Ball decorations and bowls baffle me. Are they reminders of when people had yarn balls at the ready for knitting or crochet? Are they cat taunts? Why take up this much space for a bowl of f***ing balls? But I know that you've inherited greatness. And with greatness comes great... Wait. And now you must finish what she started? Nope, she does not. Generational expectations can go to hell. In a shocking turn of events, Miss Marvel has veered from the 17 logo pattern of the first two episodes to a baffling 19. Why? Why not have 18 last episode and 20 next episode? Did no one plan this? Did no one think that someone would go frame by frame counting every single image? Does no one know who we are anymore? See, there's like ghost stories and then there's gin stories and the gin stories are so much worse because they're real and yet still no alarm bells are ringing that these people that just poofed into kamala's life out of nowhere may not be on the up and up also they need my help which means i need your help boldly admitting that you are flat out using your friend do you know anything about interdimensional travel off the top of your head i get that this is a deliberately ridiculous request to get a laugh but does she honestly expect oh. actually no that reminds me of a paper i read what the f he actually does Serious because your person of interest is enhanced or because she was spotted at a mosque, ma'am. I hate to imagine how often incidents similar to this have happened in the last 20 years. I'm willing to bet it's all too often, and I'm glad the show's putting it front and center. Watching TikTok on your computer instead of your phone. Also, TikTok. Uh, all these people, your family? <laughs> Has this not been explained to you before today? Is anyone asking how Bruno had a perfect model of Kamala's face with which to create this mask? I just realized that the lighting of the store is perfect for dramatic tension, but horrible for actual shopping. Hey, listen, I can help you with this. Mr. Khan will somehow spot the word gin from this very casual glance, which will result in him exposit translationing the whole damn thing so that everyone in the back row is brought up to date. Also, what is up with the shot? Why does it look like we're hiding inside the shelf spying on Mr. Khan and Bruno? Or am I not supposed to talk about that? Okay, what do we have here? A highly specific piece of lore about a highly specific group of people that will specifically assist this scene becoming highly convenient for the plot. Cheer up, cheer up. Come on. Yeah, kill that emotion. The timing isn't right when someone else needs attention for a greater and more important event than your breakdown. Don't be overtaken when you can clamp a lid on that sh so tight it will never leak out through the form of loser's tears. Excuse me, show? There have been inventive texting visuals overlaid over bedspreads, neon signs, and lights on the ceiling. Where's the ingenuity now? Why aren't the characters on the wall bursting to life and spelling out this conversation? You set the standard. Why allow this text to be boring? Tricking me into thinking this QR code was a possible teaser for a new Monument Valley, when in fact it is yet another attempt to get me to sign up for something that costs money after seven days. Weddings. A man has one fundamental choice in life. To live a life in fear or love. Mr. Khan then goes on to also mention that... He chooses faith, courage. Which seems like more than one fundamental choice to me. And to make things more confusing, he adds... A man who chooses family... It's never alone. So now our fundamental singular choices of love or fear, which was an oversimplification meant to make things easier for Amir, has instantly become more complicated with faith, courage, and family now on the table. Never have I seen a couple so certain of their love as they are of themselves. And everyone else in the room who is married by this man takes a long look at their marriage partner and wonders if this is yet another sign that they shouldn't have married so soon. We're going to make her help us. 
I'm not asking anymore. My goodness, Najma goes all in on the evil reveal very quickly. There's still a good chance that Kamala will help them, and after 100 years of waiting, what's the rush now? Exposing yourself now is far riskier. And if you don't believe me, Najma, just skip ahead to the end of the episode. This extremely wholesome celebration is beautiful, but still goes on for all the did I not mention I hate weddings sometime. I don't mind a great dance scene in a show, especially ones that are so filled with smiles and vibrancy, but I do mind all the shots to the audience's reaction. Why cut away to strangers to prove that everyone's having a good time? Show me the cast dancing or show me nothing at all. You're not safe. None of you are safe. What? Kamala, they're coming often. Instead of telling Kamala exactly what's going on, Kamran pronoun games so hard that even though I've seen the build up to this, I still have no idea what or who he's talking about. Everyone needs to get out of here right now. You'd think the room that has the most fire in the building would also have the most fire alarms, but clearly not because as the rest of the building evacuates, these cooks continue about their evening. I hope they get tipped well. Is everything all right inside? They're not letting us back in. Yes, that's generally how fires work. Even the unconfirmed ones. Wasting cake. It would appear that the battle strategy of attacking one at a time and ignoring any possible flanking maneuvers afforded by having multiple people on your side is a multi-dimensional constant. <laughs> Hang on, if Najma can just use that dagger spear to smash the marvelous stepping stones, why doesn't she use it to break through the light shield that Kamala puts up? It's made of the same sh**, right? This is some physics-defying bullshit. Even for Marvel, the only way Kamala escapes from the tablecloth unseen is if the hench people somehow suffered from temporary blindness or the bangle decided to function as a plot teleporter instead of plot armor for a few seconds. The magical beings from another dimension quickly ditch their cool signature weaponry for good old fisticuffs because that's clearly more entertaining to watch. Once again, several people are approaching Kamala who suddenly show no interest in watching her depart despite her bright colors and shimmery superpowers. Also, just because Kamala and Najma see a distracting ethereal train coming out of the sky does not mean the rest of the djinn wouldn't notice the DODC entering the building and approaching them for an ambush. Earlier, we saw Nakia leave for no apparent reason, and now she inexplicably turns up here just in time to see Kamala use her powers. And I need to know why we aren't focusing on her story and how she got her powers of telepathy and or perfect timing. Can you tell us what exactly happened? can't. Your 16-year-old daughter just ruined your son's wedding. You saw her with a strange group of adults that now have been arrested, and you're going to accept I just can't as a reason for why she won't explain any of this to you? This has gone way beyond sneaking off at night without permission. She could be and is in serious danger, and you're just sending her off to bed with no supper? What is going on here? It's all part and parcel of the whole genie gig. I don't know. It seems like a lot of bad things happen because of this bangle. It's an inanimate fucking object. You're an inanimate fucking object! Dude, I just had the craziest night. There were horses and a man on fire and I killed a guy with a trident. <laughs> that idea is terrible. I'll tell you when you have a signed warrant. Now get the fuck off my property. Separate the tail from the body with a firm twist. You can discard the body or you can save it for soup. Light. There's a chance. Come on. So you're telling me there's a chance. You choo choo choose me? Which is why you have to come. You have to come to Karachi. It's your kids, Marty. Something has got to be done about your kids. 